So there we go, that's a track called Warrior from Triona, who joins me now in the studio. Triona, how are you? I'm great, how are you Robin? Very well, thank you. So tell us about Warrior, Was, is there a story behind that? Yeah, the sort of backstory behind Warrior um, came about really, I had a lot of self-doubt and, you know, kind of was kind of battling with the idea of doing music and having to really go for it and stuff and um, probably release some music and stuff, I kind of, I quite, doubted it quite a bit and um, especially with Warrior it was kind of like a pinnacle point for me because it was like you know what sometimes you have to just believe in yourself and believe that you have the strength and the courage to to do something that you love doing and forget about like all these other voices in your own head so it was really about the, the battle with your your own self and uh, it's funny because whenever I wa wrote Warrior it took me a good two years to actually release the song so oh. <laughs> <laughs> so finally woke up that Warrior and released it. <laughs> And of course now your songs being played on radio and stuff so it must be great to, to hear that. Yeah it, it really is great because um, from writing that song and actually releasing it I've been getting lots of messages and people getting in touch about like how they found something within the song and how it's motivated them and you know brought courage and, and bravery into their own lives and stuff so that is really it's really something when people have that response back to it it, it means a lot then. So has music always been part of your life right from an early age? You know it's kind of funny I kind of Unlike a lot of other people, I kind of, music found me, you know, it wasn't really um, something that I set out to do initially. Uh, whenever I was about nine or ten, I picked up my dad's guitar um, and he taught me a few chords and then I just started, really started writing songs because I was getting like a hard time at school and stuff then, so it was like more of like a, kind of like a release for me. And um, then my auntie asked me would I take part in like a, in a local competition and so I did one song and from that um, another lady saw me perform and she was friends with um, somebody who worked in a hotel, right. Le Mans Hotel 
and they were looking for a singer for the next week on St. Patrick's Day to do like an hour set of material. And by this stage, I only knew one song of the guitar. So I literally sat down with the guitar and learnt about like 10 to 20 songs that week. Did the gig the next week and the hotel, the hotel asked me back then. One of the managers just happened to be passing through during my set. And he says, you know, we love what you, we love what you do. Would you come back on Mother's Day? Right. And we want to pay you. Yeah. So I was like, copy days. I was, I was only 15 at the time. So I was like, this is, this is amazing. I was like, okay. And, um, and then from that, there was a guy in the bar who was an interior designer, but he also done bar work in the hotel. And he then got in touch. He done all the interior design for the heart bar and like the dark horse and stuff. Mm -hmm. So he said to the guy down there, and then I came down for an audition and um, Willie Jack, he took me into the bar and he's like, right, okay, you sing away and I'll tidy the tables up. <laughs> I was like, okay. So then I was singing away and the bar was empty. He went over to the Duke of York and started bringing all these crowds over and I was singing for about two hours. Wow. And uh, he took me out the back and he says, you see that mural up there? Do you know in the big court? Yes, yeah. He says, you'll be up there. He, and he has me up on the mural. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> I know, so, and um, always dreamt about like going out to Nashville and. I would be a big sort of believer in like setting goals and that sort of stuff. So I always knew that I wanted to do music and yeah. perform before I even picked up the guitar. I was I knew that I could sing, and um, so I always wanted to go to Nashville. And and then that opportunity came along. And they flew me out to Nashville the next year, and ever since I've been going back and meeting like so many people and write writers and and like publishers and different people. And that's allowed me to fly back and forth and build on my own strengths and of course you know, performing music. in some of those venues in Nashville must have been an amazing experience oh yeah big time like it I've you know I've been so lucky it's it's been really really weird for me because I've never really set out to like do any of this at all like you know I've, I've had goals and stuff but it's really weird how the opportunities come about and even got to play in like the Bluebird Cafe yeah. like which is one of the most iconic venues in the world and that was just so like strange how that happened it was with the Belfast Nashville Festival and you know, I said it in my head. I was like, I would love to play that. And then next thing you know, like the next year I was in, I was like, how did this happen? Yeah. And you know what? It looks like you're still really enjoying yourself. I was watching your vlog, which you have <laughs> online now as well. And it looks like you're having an absolute ball everywhere you go. Yeah, for me, it's not really about like, obviously you set yourself goals and you know, you want to be successful and stuff. But, you know, there's no point in like, um, waiting until you have had this, this big success and you know, then you'll be happy. You know, it's all about the journey for me. Mm -hmm. And that's why anything that I go to do, I'm like, right, we're gonna we're gonna make this fun. We're gonna make this an adventure. And like the Irish Open, that was the the vlog on the Irish Open. And my dad and my sister came down, and I was like, yeah, let's take the camera out. And it was literally just capturing what we were doing every day, like having our cups of coffee and having <laughs> a bit of crack, you know. And that's what it is. It has to be fun. It's um, my dad often told me he says. He taught us when we were younger, do something that you love so it doesn't feel like you're working half the time, yeah. you know. He says, you know, that day that it comes that it's not any fun, you don't enjoy it, don't do it anymore. Cause so, so was your dad a musician as well? No, my dad, <laughs> my dad, whenever I was born, I was the first girl after four boys. He picked up the guitar, it was something like a hobby to do, yeah. he had an interest in it. And uh, at that stage, everybody, he used to be practicing like dee, dee, like strumming the guitar, but it was like horrendous. Nobody <laughs> wanted to listen to it. So everybody used to flee out of the kitchen, but I was wee bad in the bouncer. I was only uh, born at that stage. And um, he used to have me in the wee red bouncer and I used to like tap, tap my wee foot along to the oh, beat of the wow. music. So that's probably where like it all sort of the first, first seeds were planted. And he was the biggest influence, like as in to getting into music and stuff. And that's where it kind of derived from, you know. And you're picking up fans all over the place. And I believe Carl Frampton is in the next video. That's How right. do you get Carl <laughs> Frampton to be in your music video? <laughs> well, it's, that's actually another really strange <laughs> story. So I wrote this song, um, Won't Go Down, like maybe a couple of years ago now. And it, again, it's another motivational song. And, and my brother's all boxed and stuff. So it was kind of like, they taught me like a few boxing moves and stuff out in the gym. And I kind of based the concept around that, like, you know, cause life is like you're in a boxing ring, you have to like fight your corner and, you know, stand up for what you believe and keep going on even whenever it's like the 12th round and you feel like falling to the ground, you know? And um, Carl's actually, he's a fan of the music, you know, and he was, him and Christine come down to the Heart Bar and it was Carl's 30th birthday coming up and uh, he was having over in the dark horse and they specially requested you know that I come sing at the birthday party so from that and then I was going over to uh, New York a couple of years ago and Carl was fighting in New York and my brother 
I just happened to be stopping off. My brother was going to the fight and there was, I don't think there was any more tickets and Carl was like, here, get here some tickets, you know, come over to the fight and da da da. And he kept coming back and forth to the, the harp bar and just was a fan of the music. Mm -hmm. And I let him listen to that song and he's like, you know, I've actually really wanted to do like something cool, like a music video. He's like, I love that song. And, and he's like, come on over to the gym and we'll, we'll do a music video. And I was like, yeah, okay. <laughs> I was like, happy days, I'll, I'm up for that. So literally went, to, it was, you know, it was so cool, like going over to the training camp and getting to meet like um, Conrad Cummings and Stephen Ward. They were all, you know, Belfast boxers that were fighting and um, training in the gym as well. So it was class to see the setup because I would have a big interest in boxing anyway yeah. because of my brother. So it was an extra bonus. I was like, this is super cool. <laughs> Okay, you're going to do one more song before you leave us, one of your own. What are you going to do this time? That's right, I'm going to do a song called Sound of a Heartbreaking. And what's the story behind this one? Uh, probably the story behind this one is just breaking up with somebody and, you know, it's like you're, you're clinging on but you have to let go, sort of that sort of, you know, heartbreak sort of song. So. Great stuff, Triona. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me. So here we go with uh, the sound of a heartbreaking. Here is Triona. Cause I can better let you go The walls are high Even when we're close Lying here Next to you in the dark We are strangers now Standing miles apart The greatest fear Something that you can see The sound of a heart Heart breaking, a heart breaking, a heart breaking. 